Ready? Hi, my name's Vicky. My talks are basically all on assessment styles, and I've chosen one in particular today, which is MCQ, mainly because one of my first experiences of first week, because it was mainly a haze, but my first experience was mainly the fact we got told on our first lecture that we're going to be having an exam that week. The biggest shock of that was the fact it was going to be MCQ. I thought at a degree level, was MCQ really the best way they could be testing us? Um, this will basically go through what MCQs are, why they use, how they're used, the negative effects with specific focus on generation effect and the negative suggestion effects, and possible interventions that could combat these negative effects. For introduction to MCQs, I'm sure you've all sat an MCQ exam since we've done it, had about a million of them. Um, it's a type of examination format. It's mainly used in universities, and this is because of a large co cohort of students marking weekly exams would be impossible if it wasn't an automated system and it would be very expensive. This is very accurate, it's more or less immediate and it examines a basic knowledge but over a very large spectrum of information. Um, why they use MCQs? You can have a very large question base and what they generally do is it takes quite a lot of time to actually format a MCQ exam but they have a massive question base and each year they'll pick out a, a group of questions. So once you've done the hard work for one year, that same exam can be used for up to something like 10 years. It's faster marking. It can reduce marking time from two days to 15 minutes. Um, this in itself, obviously, it's really easy then to make your students become um, viable for the testing effect. But it saves a hell of a lot of money. Bristol University, when they change to MCQ, save half a million pound a year, every year. And it also creates money. If you can mark a lot of assessments automatically, then you can lecture to a, a much bigger group and be able to actually mark their work effectively. Um, some of the problems, you can only really look at basic information. You can't really delve deep into um, a specific theory and lecturers don't want you to either. When they're teaching and with any style of teaching, they want you to pass your exams for a good grade, it obviously reflects well on them, but they teach you a certain way. Um, there's an example which happened in Bang University when one of my friends emailed the lecturer and said, really like that theory, what happens if you flip it on its head and you do this with it and what happens when this happens and, and his reply was basically, you don't need to worry about that, when you focus on your exam, don't look any deeper into that. And for me, in, 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 at a degree level, when are you supposed to become interested in anything? Are we just supposed to be automated memory machines where we sit in an exam, we're told to know A, B and C, we know A, B and C, but then what's the point? You know, and then there's even bigger problems with queued question problems. MCQ is a queued question. A queued question is when you're giving a list of answers to pick from. Um, MCQ is a m the m like m famous one for this type of question. But the two of the biggest problems are generation effect and the negative um, suggestion effect. The generation effect, this basically means if you are revising and you've got a book in front of you and you're copying down word for word what the book's telling you, um, or if you're in an you're doing it with your, with your lecture notes. So you've got your presentation that they've given you off Blackboard, you're then copying down exactly what else they're saying. When you're sitting in an examination hall, an MCQ examination, if you see the question you've written down in your notes and then you pick the answer, which word for word you've seen and they've reiterate, reiterated at you, that's when generation effect occurs. And when that occurs, you're less likely to know the, rem remember the information. So we're getting taught to know, we're getting like, with MCQs, you have to know exactly the right answer. Nearly the right answer is never okay with MCQ. So unless you use their words and use their words to re reiterate it back, you fail that mark. But by doing that, you don't remember anything. There was a study conducted with medical students, and worryingly, when they used MCQ, MCQ format examinations, they forgot most of what they'd learnt by the end of their exam, by the end of their degree. For a medical student, that's a little bit worrying because they're going to be our doctors. Um, this can be avoided if you're given um, questions where you have to apply your knowledge. So stats it works quite well with because it's, not, it's, it's fine knowing that A is related to B somehow, but you have to actually work out the answer. In that scenario, that's fine. But in something which is like social um, psychology and you're told this theory means this, pick out the, the most relevant one, that is when you know generation effect occurs. Okay, this is basically what happens to me in an MCQ exam. So I get to the exam hall, I'm sitting at my desk, um, I get stuck in a question. 
So, and then my next step that I do is, okay, what keywords in that question do I know? And then from there, what do I know about them? And then I start thinking, which one of those answers, or two of those answers, doesn't fit with what I know? So what words don't I recognize there? I then remove any ones which I think, okay, that can't be it, that can't be it, that isn't what I know. I then pick the most logical answer. I then rightly so, give myself a pat on the back. Work that one out well, curveball, all okay. However, if like me, you do that, you are actually succumb to the negative suggest suggestions effect. And basically this goes through that if that is how you work out your answers in an examination in MCQ format, you, you, the most answers you'll remember are the wrong ones you've given. Because in your exam, with something you are reading word for word and you know off by heart, there's no deep understanding, there's no deep thought process, there's no cognitive processes which is making you think about that information. But with a question you don't know the answer to, you're spending so much time working out how that can fit in with what you know and why that could be right, that you remember the wrong answer. Again, this can be combated if you're given instant corrective in-depth feedback. It's not good enough to say question one is the answer is A, question two is the answer is B, because it's not in-depth. You have to fight back and give them as much thinking processes as that student would have been under during that examination. But then again, is that even possible? Can you imagine being in an exam, you've done, you've done an hour and a half MCQ exam, you're waiting to get out, either because you need to get to the pub because it's all over, or because you're getting ready for your next one. Would you stay knowing that no matter what, there's nothing you can do to affect that grade? Would you stay thinking, okay, so I might have completely messed my exam, but in 10 years time, I know um, something about Freud might become useful. You know, it's very difficult. Even Would lecturers even want to do that? How would you get, and especially going through an exam paper, how long would that take? Is it realistic? So there's pros and cons. So the pr pros is very large question base. In an, ex in an essay exam, there's only so many questions you can ask. Um, it saves uh, a lot of money, and it produces money as well. The cons, it reduces retention rates. Um, incorrect information will be mostly remembered, and only basic facts can be tested. Solutions, we can use complex questions and immediate corrective feedback after exams. <laughs> Any questions? Awesome. <laughs>